Holding China accountable, President Trump announcing his administration is conducting investigations into China and its Communist Party, saying it could have stopped the rapid spread of the coronavirus. This, as an administration official tells Fox News, China could have 50 times more coronavirus cases than it is actually claiming. Joining me right now is Florida Senator, member of the Senate Foreign Relations, Select Intelligence and Small Business and Entrepreneurship Committees, Marco Rubio. Senator, it's great to see you this morning. Thanks so much for joining us. Good morning. You have... Thank uh, backed and supported and are pushing forward legislation about keeping China accountable. I'm going to get to that in a moment, but I want to ask you about the Paycheck Protection Program first. Let's talk small business. How much of this second tranche, the $310 billion, is already committed? Well, I don't know about the word committed, because obviously, first you have to submit the application and it has to be approved. And what SBA did uh, to try to do, or is trying to do, to prevent some of these geographic uh, disparities that we saw, where some areas got a lot because they have a lot of small banks and others didn't, where big banks might have taken a lot of the money, is they're trying to pace the way they process the applications. But you combine that new pacing system with double as many people trying to get in yesterday into their system as any time, any single day during the first round, and it was a messy rollout. We'll so hopefully that improves today. But ultimately, let me be clear, the demand for that for PPP loans far exceeds the supply of dollars. I just want to be frank and honest about it. The, the need out there is much greater than what's been appropriated, and what's been given for it is a lot. I mean, we're talking about almost $700 billion. That is a lot of money. But the need is so, greater. There's no doubt. So what I want are we going to do about, about it? What, what, what do you do about it then, yeah. Senator? I mean, lenders and borrowers hit with delays, errors, slow processing times to get at the $310 billion in fresh funding. I recognize the Small Business Administration is being asked to do a lot. I mean, they gave, you know, a portion of this money out in 14 years, and now they're, they're being asked to do it uh, in, in uh, $350 billion in, in 14 days. So I get that. But how is this going to help the economy come back? Well, just how, what do you do about it? It's a catch-22, okay? Because in the first round, people said, well, how come these banks and these states got more loans than we did? And the answer is, well, because they submitted quicker or they had they, they did they were they were able to submit them faster and they were being approved first come, first serve. So that was the complaint. So this time it's like, OK, what we're going to do is we're only going to allow every lender to, to get X number of approvals per hour and X number of submissions per hour. And uh, and so when you do that, you're slowing it down for everybody right after you get three or five through it stops you for an hour and they have to go back. So you can't, you know, it's a catch-22 that they're facing. And then you couple that with uh, just the sheer volume. And the reason why yesterday was such a big day of applications is because the Democrats blocked funding for an entire week. So for the last 10 days, no one's been able to submit, which created a huge backlog. So hopefully today that'll speed up. But just remember, they are pacing it so that not any single bank or any geographic area gets all the loans. But that necessarily slows it down. So you're, you know, almost damned if you do, damned if you don't on it. But wh why would the Democrats slow walk this? I don't understand. I mean, we're in a pandemic. Well, that's a, I know. Well, the answer is that they view everything as an opportunity to get other things. So, you know, every single word, because hmm. I, I heard a couple of people the other day say, well, the Republicans put this in the bill, that in the bill. Every single word in this bill was bipartisan. There was very little fighting over it. I mean, there was some minor details that we had to work out. But that entire law and every provision was something that had broad bipartisan support, okay? They knew that we would eventually hit the money cap. No one knew how fast it would be, but they knew they would. And every time that something like that comes up, they view it as an opportunity to say, all right, we'll do something that they agree on if we do something else that they want. And that's what you saw last week, because almost everything they got wow. in that second round, we could have had a week earlier. So it's about playing. It's, it's sort of that's traditional really hardball politics. Yeah. Well, that's where we are. That is terrible, Senator. That is so terrible. Meanwhile, you've got more than 32,000 cases of coronavirus confirmed in Florida right now. While the statewide death toll tops more than 1,000, Florida's governor says that the coronavirus curve has flattened, though. That's good news from Ron DeSantis. Officials throughout the state are now discussing a phased reopening to get residents and businesses back to normal or close to it. What can you tell us about your state? Uh, and, 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 and the reopening here in the next couple of weeks? Well, let me say three things. Number one, as long as we don't have immunity, meaning a vaccine, there's going to be infections, unfortunately, and there will be hospitalizations. And, and, and this is not good news. But, but that, however long that takes, that, that's, that's the fact. Number two, our job here is to ensure that the infection rate is slow so it doesn't overwhelm our hospital systems. And third, 
I think everybody needs to accept that we don't, we're not talking about going back to the way things were two months ago, back to the normal yeah. that we we're used to. But we can't, what we're in now and is not, we can't keep indefinitely either. So I think you're going to see phased approaches in different parts. In Miami-Dade County, where I live, they're beginning to open up parks with severe restrictions, but nonetheless, they're opening up some parks. My sense is that if trend lines continue, they'll find ways to open up more businesses. But again, these openings are going to be with social distancing, numbers, uh, limitations, yeah. and the like. We're going to be in this for a while, and no one's ever done this before. So this is going to be a hit-and-miss right. approach in many cases. I mean, there's no, there's no outline or guideline for how to do this perfectly. It, it feels like things don't become normal again until a vaccine or until 2021. I mean, we are going to be very aware of a new normal, if you will, as, as things reopen. Yeah. Yes? Real quick, I want to get to China. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I think that's So fine. I had that's Senator exactly Tom right. Cotton on on Sunday. Your colleague, Tom Cotton, said that the Chinese Communist Party made a decision to allow this virus to escape its borders. Uh, whether or not it was an accident, they came out of the lab in Wuhan, fine, put that aside. But they made a decision. Once they understood the severity of this virus, they allowed it to escape its borders. They shut down the Hubei province, but 433,000 people were able to travel from China to America in, in January. You have talked about holding China accountable. You've got bills right now. The president has announced an administration is conducting an investigation into China. China, what's the best way to hold them accountable? And do you really believe you're going to be able to move the needle in terms of these supply chains, getting some of those products made in America? Number one, the first one of the first doctors that put up on a group chat that there was a problem and a new disease was forced by the Chinese to sign a paper saying that he would stop spreading these lies. That's what they forced him to sign. That doctor died from COVID-19 about a week later. Number two, if China had acted when those warnings were being made, instead of silencing the people that were talking about it, they could have limited the spread. So there was no doubt that that was a deliberate decision made on their part. <clears throat> and number three, the one way to hold them accountable is to do what we should be doing anyway, and that is moving the means of production to become less and less dependent upon them. I think in, what you're going to see after this pandemic is that more and more countries are going to prioritize their healthcare manufacturing capabilities and other industries, and they're going to clamp down on it uh, and exports of those products in, in a time of crisis when there's a shortage or potentially as leverage. And we need to be prepared for that new world by ramping up our own capabilities and those of our allies and partners that we can rely on. And that, that, that obviously is going to be a price you... to pay for the Chinese Communist Party, but we have to do it for ourselves no matter what. Do you think corporate CEOs get it, Senator? I mean, come on. For 20 years, I covered corporations who were dying to get a foothold into China to sell to the 1.4 billion person population, and they would just roll over and do what China wanted them to do, the Communist Party, I should say, not China, the Chinese Communist Party. Do you think global CEOs right. are getting it now, that we can't be in the middle of a pandemic and get threats that they're not going to send us the prescription drugs that we need? Look, I think they understand it. I think the question is whether they'll be supportive of it. And the answer is some of them will, many of them won't. Because the truth is they are ultimately judged at their jobs by how much money they can make for their corporation that they, that they run. And if you can do things cheaper in China, it's, it's going great, great, to get a profit motive or a profit incentive for you in terms of keeping it there. But that's the direction the world yeah. is going. And it's not just the United States that's going in that direction. So this will be the new reality that I think they're going to have to accept and make work. All right, Senator, it's great to talk with you as always. Thanks so much for stopping by.